Oh, that's, uh, that's our old address, actually. Um, I'll get into that in a moment. Um, okay, well, I'm Roger Piscina. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a student here at Pan Am, um, getting a degree in mechanical engineering. And um, actually, we have a startup in my garage. Um, so I'm here to talk about the consumer drone industry. Um, I believe that everyone here, or at least 90% of you, are going to own a personal drone within the next 10 years. Now, you may be looking at me saying, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to be owning a drone in the next 10 years. Well, actually, the first CEO of Apple and the first investor, Mike Markula, he said in a recent interview that you could have asked anyone in 1976, would you like to own a computer? And pretty much everyone said, what would I do with the computer? That's for the military, for scientific research. I don't think I would ever own a computer. They didn't see beyond what the computer could actually do. And let me tell you, a drone is going to make your life so much easier. You're no longer going to have to go out for milk. You're no longer going to have to go out for your Burger King. This drone will do it for you. You forget your briefcase at home when you're at work, your drone will bring your briefcase to you. That's where the technology is going right now. And actually, it's a very small industry. That's another thing I wanted to mention. Most of the top players in the consumer drone market right now, they're only valued in five, six million dollars. A bad quarter, they can go bankrupt. So, <clears throat> oh, okay. As I was mentioning, um, drones, like computers, which I think is really cool, both technologies actually entered the market as kits. Uh, the Altair 8800 is a very famous uh, personal computer kit. It's actually the computer kit that started Microsoft. Um, Bill Gates wrote the basic interpreter for the Altair 8800. He actually dropped out of college and moved to New Mexico to work on it. Um, Apple as well. Uh, Woz came out of his slumber for two years, and he saw this, and he was inspired to make the Apple One. Uh, Microcopter is an actual German drone company. There's a lot of companies that build uh, drone kits. I really want to say that Microcopter was the one that kind of started the revolution. Um, a couple of years later, 3D Robotics helped it move along with their Ardu pilot uh, technology. But like I said, that was in 2006. Shortly later, it was a completed product. Um, when you have a kit, and take my word for it, I bought one of these kits. Uh, for the drones, the average person really can't solder, connect the wires, buy the correct battery, like buy all the control like equipment and everything to put it together. So recently, at the beginning of this year, the first completed drone, ready out of the box, no assembly required, entered the market. And right now, it's really making a big buzz. It's made by a Chinese company called DJI Innovations, and. Um, the Associated Press and the media refer to the Phantom as the Apple II of the drone world right now. Um, like I said, this is bleeding edge technology. Like, you know, it's on the edge and it's a great drone, but it's missing a lot of things. It doesn't have its own camera. You need to buy the camera afterwards. It's the first step in many drones that are going to follow. And like I said, what does Eve Tech do and who is? Eve Unmanned Vehicles. That's actually the company we plan to start um, this fall. We're going to call it Eve Unmanned Vehicles. And it's really a team of students that, um, from different disciplines, uh, mechanical engineering, another worker, I mean, co worker here on the team, David, he's also a mechanical engineer. We have uh, two computer engineers and an electrical engineer. Like, it's a very multidisciplinary um, team because Drones require many different like technologies and many different understandings in many different fields to get them to work together. So this is the team right here in the picture. Um, we work out of my garage. We do rapid prototyping with our 3D printer. We have our equipment to test our electric ducted fans. We do a lot of our creative process in there. Um, and what I want to talk to you about is more or less like the brief history of how this got started. Actually, I had kind of been floating on the idea of having something like a flying car based on a quadcopter. 
since like fall 2011. And I'd been struggling a lot over a year to try and do it myself. But I'm not an electrical engineer. And I'm not even a computer engineer. I know nothing really about sensors and all that great jazz. So the beginning of this year for my senior design project, I was like, I really need to take this risk and put this team together to get this project moving forward. Because literally in one year, all I have are these really cool doodles and you know, more or less kind of the technology I want to use in the design, but no understanding of the technology itself. So I was able to convince a lot of the other students from different departments to come on board to work on this idea for kind of a flying car drone. And this is originally what I had. And I went to speak with a professor, Dr. Banatoski, in the electrical engineering department. And he's like, what do you want to do? Well, I explained more or less I wanted this flying car based on quadcopter technology. So OK, do you know how quadcopters work? No. I don't know how to, how, like, how to build a quadcopter. I have this kid sitting on my desk. and. You know, I don't know how to work with it. Well, just that leap, like a lot of people don't take that leap because they think people are going to tell them no, or that I'm not going to help you, or your idea is crazy. And really what you need to understand is you'd be surprised how many people were willing to say yes. Like Steve Jobs once uh, talked about how when he was a young boy, he actually called Bill Hewlett to help him build a frequency counter. And he asked him if he had any spare parts. Because back then, you know, all the phones were in the phone book. Like, there were no unlisted phones. And Bill Hewlett just laughed. He's like, yeah, of course. I'll give you all the parts you need. And he actually gave him a job working at Hewlett Packard over, that su over the summer. And Jobs said that a lot of people never pick up the phone. It's all in their head. They dream of doing great things, but they never do them because it always stays in their head. So you need to be willing to take that step forward and take that risk. Even if you don't know what you're doing, you need to at least try. So we improved the idea over the course of the semester. And now we know more or less what we're doing. This is our second gen design. We're now moving to the third gen design, which is probably the one that we're actually going to be completing by the end of the semester. Um, like I mentioned, we've had our setbacks. Any project has setbacks. Um, like, for example, when we first started working with electric ducted fans, we still didn't realize how tremendously powerful they were or even how to balance them properly. So, you know, we had that problem there. The first time we tried to fly our electric ducted fan quadcopter, um, we had problems with it flipping over like that. And then the first time we actually 3D printed our own frame, that was actually made from a 3D printer, the frame and everything. Um, well, it, it flew, but it didn't fly long. <laughs> so yeah, like I'm saying, you're going to have your setbacks. There's no such thing as a project that from start to finish is completely successful. You're always going to have setbacks. You're always going to have failures. But you're also going to have successes. Um, we were having a lot of difficulty taking uh, the maximum power out of an electric ducted fan. We couldn't actually get the max thrust, and it wasn't until this day uh, in that video that we were finally able to get it to operate over 90% of its maximum thrust. And it was like a big moment for us because we had been trying really hard to get over um, three kilograms of thrust per EDF. And uh, once we got it flying, it was pretty cool, actually. Um, it flew like a dream. And um, if you notice the video right there. This is actually, we call this our proving grounds. Uh, it's right in front of my house. It's Calvary Baptist Church. They have this really nice open field. We're not like, it's not that big, but it's big enough. And that's usually where we test our, our, our flights. I'm not the best cameraman either. I'm sorry. Like, you know. <laughs> and yeah, no, that's it, hovering over the grass. Some people say that we should actually mark it as a lawnmower. So. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, this is only our flight system. This is like half of the design. This just proves that. How we want it to fly works. Um, this was also the, the day that we tested uh, back in May here at uh, Pan Am. It was the first time a quadcopter was built um, in the engineering department by students properly. People had built quadcopters before, but they always crashed or they couldn't fly under their own power. Uh, we were the team that built the first working one. And uh, yeah. So. Like I was saying, you, you know, you're going to have your setbacks and you're going to have your successes. Um, and uh, 
where are we going to take it from here? We're, hopefully, we're going to have our project completed by the end of this fall semester, and it's going to work the way we want it to. Uh, we're really trying to market that novelty um, that we're going to have a vehicle that can fly and drive, and it's going to be a drone. Believe it or not, over the summer, some guy in the UK actually came up with another vehicle that has the same features, but ours is designed differently, and ours is going to perform way better. <laughs> um, and in just a little over 30 days on Kickstarter, he was able to raise 122,000 British pounds, which translates to about 200,000 US dollars. So there is a demand for the product we're trying to build. And the great thing about crowdfunding, and it's really new, I mean, it's only been around for about two, four years, um, is you don't longer have to go to investors and beg for money. Like, you know, if you have a great idea and you put it on one of these crowdfunding websites, Kickstarter, Rocket Hub, Crowdfunder, or Indie, uh, go, go. Um, you'll know if there's demand for your product. And instantly, you're going to have that cash infusion to launch you into manufacturing. So it's a really great time to be an entrepreneur, and it's a really great time to do a startup. Because there's no longer the excuse, oh, I don't have money to do it, or I can't, you know, I won't be able to get it off the ground. Like, the resources are there to do this. And um, questions? That's pretty much it. <laughs> Nick? He was selling each one for six hundred dollars. It's probably gonna be double, probably. Yeah, but like I said, his um his does have a built in camera. But ours is different because our camera is actually gonna be able to pivot like in swing from side to side. Um, ours is also different. It can lift more weight. It has a faster top speed in the sky and also on the ground. Uh, probably, but right now it's illegal to fly over 400 feet using drones by the FAA. So even if it could fly higher than 400 feet, I'm not <laughs> liberty to say. So, but, uh, but yeah, no, it can fly really high. That's really cool, very cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the one from China. They're selling it for $700. Um, but that one can only fly. Like the one that we saw on Kickstarter actually, actually could drive on the ground and fly. But the one that DJI makes, uh, the Phantom, it can, it, it can fly and it does real, a lot of things really well. But it doesn't have the sensors needed to like, you know, back away from someone when you're getting close to it. It also doesn't come in with a built-in camera. It has a camera mount for a GoPro. Like, it's an incomplete product. And even then, oh, go ahead. No, no, I oh. oh, I was going to say, even then, um, even then they di they've done reviews over it. And they say that it's not completely assembled out of the box. Like, you still need to attach propellers. You still need to read, like, a 16-page manual to understand what these LED colors mean whenever they're flashing. So we really wanted to, like, make it more like multimedia content, like with video. That way it's a lot easier to understand your drone out of the box. You're saying, Nick? Exactly. That's, that's exactly what we're going to try and do. Um, the sensors are available to do that. Man, you'd be surprised how much the technology's progressed just in the last two years. Yeah. That's, that's infrared sensors. It basically, like, you know, it bounces light off, and, like, you know, there's a program on the actual, like, the board that says. Yeah. Oh, autonomous vehicles. Yeah, I know that's a really exciting topic, too. It looks like a year ago, no one wanted to do autonomous vehicles. This year, Tesla's already, we're going to have autonomous vehicles on the road five years from now. Nissan, by 2020, we're going to have autonomous vehicles on the road. You won't have to drive. And now GM, Ford, everyone's basically like, you know, I really like the initiative. But, but yeah, I know that, that technology, is, you're going to see that grow a lot, like, in the coming years. So you driving that? Like, uh, not yet, not yet. We're, that's where we're at right now. That's actually, a lot of people think that the flying is the hard part of our project. <laughs> it's the driving, the ground portion is the most difficult portion of our project. Uh, 
Well, right now, like, we actually have a nice Excel chart. Um, right now, our, based on all the parts that we have, um, we have a thrust to weight ratio a little over two. So um, in, the vi in the videos that you saw, we actually never went over 40% thrust. Like, there were, it was flying, maneuvering terrifically under 40% power. So we still had a lot of cushion room to add weight to it. Not only that, it was made out of PVC pipe, and PVC pipe's pretty heavy when you put all that stuff together. That thing weighed at least a good, like, 12 pounds whenever you would carry it. We're using fiberglass. I was, trust me, uh, I was a carbon fiber lover. I was like, ah, oh, man, we're going to use carbon fiber. You know what, let's even put Kevlar in there. That way, you know, it's, it's going to be able to, like, withstand impacts and everything. And then I found out that carbon fiber is the worst for radio signals. You have a vehicle flying like this, and its antenna's over here, and you're right here. The moment it turns right there, your radio signal is gone. Like, you know, radio waves have very difficult, like a, a, a lot of difficulty penetrating through carbon fiber, which is why we've moved over to fiberglass. And we might even be doing a Kevlar model as well to see if we can actually build a, a drone that's bullet resistant or bulletproof for maybe the military in the future. <laughs> okay. I'll still be around a afterwards. I mean, when, when you first um, go uh, with your project, uh, did you have any idea of how much Our next plan, we really want to have a completed, like, really refined model that we put on Kickstarter. The features it's going to have is it's going to have a built-in camera that it can actually respond to a specific um, like form of hardware that you can actually put on these goggles where you look to the left and you're actually seeing what the camera's projecting. The camera moved to the left and you look like straight, the camera will look straight, you look up, look down, the camera follows your head around everywhere. We want to have that built into the drone. Um, we already know the manufacturer that makes it, and they do it. They sell it pretty, like at a decent price. Uh, we wanted to be able to drive on the ground really well. Uh, we wanted to get good speed on the ground. We didn't just want it to, like you know, crawl on the ground. We wanted it to get at least over 20 miles an hour. I originally wanted 40, and then like you know, uh, <laughs> it was like my my coworkers are just slapping me around, like 40 miles an hour. Are you crazy? This thing's like this small. Why, why do you want such speed? But I really wanted performance out of it. And obviously, it's going to be able to fly as well. And it's going to look really cool switching from car mode to, to flight mode because that's another thing. That guy, it's, his design doesn't have a transition system. So that's why the, play, the blades are directly perpendicular to the wheel because it's either driving or it's flying. Ours is actually more integrated. It's like, within, it's like a ducted fan with the wheel. And whenever you want it to fly, it needs to rotate like the DeLorean from Back to the Future too. So, you know. That's what we really wanted that wow feature in on it. But yeah, no, that's that's pretty much everything. I'm gonna 